Okay, this lecture today is going to involve uh, planning for capital investments, specifically trying to make a decision whether a company should accept or reject a capital project. And as we've talked in the past, a capital project is an investment in a long-term asset, usually a major piece of equipment, a truck, a vehicle, a ferry, a boat, a piece of equipment, again, that lasts for a number of accounting projects, hence a capital asset capital project. So we had previously talked about the cash payback method, which we determined was not very good because it did not consider the time value of money. So we are now going to talk about the net present value method because a capital asset lasts for a number of accounting periods, a number of years, and there are many cash flows associated with that project. Those cash flows occur over many years, specifically the useful life of the asset, which could be three years, could be five years, could be 10 years, could be 15 years. So what we need to do is consider all the cash flows associated with the capital investment and make a decision. All of the cash flows, and we're going to talk about what those are in a minute, and we need to look at the present value of those cash flows, what that cash flow is worth in today's dollars, not future dollars, but today's dollars, present value dollars. And we had a lecture earlier that talked about the time value of money. And I would refer you back to the time value of money conversation to bring you up to speed. So first question is we're gonna use the net present value method. That means that we are going to look at all of our cash flows and look at the net value, outflows minus the inflows. So we're gonna have outflows. And we're going to have inflows. Say we put the outflows in brackets, the inflows in positive, and then we're going to have a NPV. So the question is, how do we interpret? How do we interpret the net present value? What does the net present value tell us? Well, specifically, and, and again, I'm going to refer you to some of the notes that I've associated with this lecture. So what if we have a positive net present value? Well, in this case, a positive net present value, that's going to be an accept. And the reason you're going to accept the project with a positive net present value, because that means that the project's return on investment is greater than greater than the company's required minimum rate of return, required rate of return. Every company determines a rate of return. That's a finance issue, kind of beyond the scope of this class. We'll talk about it in a few minutes, but there is a company required rate of return, and that's what you're going to use to discount all of the cash flows associated with this project. So when you discount those flows at the required rate of return and you have a positive net present value, that will result in you accepting the project, again, because, because the rate of return on the project is greater than the company's required rate of return. What if you had a zero NPV? Well, this is also going to be a recommendation to accept it because the rate of return on the project on the capital investment is exactly equal to the company's required rate of return. But what if you have a negative? A negative net present value. That's going to be a reject. You're going to reject that project because the rate of return on the investment, on the capital investment, is less than the company's required rate of return. So once you calculate the NPV, you will make a decision based upon whether you have positive, zero, or a negative net present value. Let's talk about the steps that you're going to use in terms of calculating net present value. And I have 
my my notes that you can refer to. The first one is you want to identify all cash flows. You want to identify all the cash flows. Some of those cash flows are going to be outflows. Some of those cash flows are going to be inflows. You want to look at all of them. Some examples of outflows of cash will be the initial investment of the equipment, the project, the outflow of cash to acquire it. There may be some repairs and maintenance that occur on an annual basis or in specific years. There might be some increased operating costs associated with the investment. And there lastly may be a major repair or equipment overhaul that occurs. Again, that would be an outflow of cash. Inflows of cash would be specifically the net annual operating income from the project. That would be revenues collected minus expenses paid, net annual operating income sale of existing equipment so as a result of purchasing this new piece of equipment they may sell an existing piece of equipment now that will result in an inflow of cash there may be some reduced expenses or reduction in annual expenses specifically a cost savings that occurs on an annual basis which again you need to take into consideration and lastly the salvage value of the equipment when the useful life of the project is over when they're done using that piece of equipment they may sell or get rid of the piece of equipment and that's going to be salvage value that would be an inflow of cash so you want to identify all of those cash flows that occur during the useful life of the project number two you want to ask yourself how often does that cash flow occur how often does that cash flow occur? Does it happen annually? If it happens annually, you're going to take the present value of that cash flow. You're going to use the present value of an annuity table because it happens on an annual basis. And you can only use the annuity table if that cash flow occurs annually and the dollar amount is equal. So annual and equal in order to use the annuity table. So that would be an annual cash flow. The other situation you might have is that cash flow may occur only once, may only occur once during the asset's useful life. And again, you want to know that occurs once, and that would be the present value of one, the PV of one, because it only occurs once during that useful life. And number three, you want to ask yourself when when does that cash flow occur if it happens annually and equal you want to identify that and use the pv of an annuity table but if it happens once you want to specifically ask yourself in which year did it occur did it occur in year two year three year four year five because again you want to know what n equals is n three or is it five or is it seven? You want to know the answer to that question. And then lastly, what is the discount rate? What is the discount rate? Also known as the cost of capital plus risk, also known as a company's required rate of return. That's going to be the discount rate that you use to determine the present value of these cash flows. That's going to be I. What's the interest rate? Is the interest rate 6% or is it 10%? What is the discount rate? What is the interest rate? So with that in mind, we can take a look at some problems. I've selected five fairly straightforward problems that um, we can take a look at. And again, I've provided you with those problems in the Sakai platform that we have. And there's, there's five short ones, and we'll um, take a look at them. I don't know if you, if in case you don't have the problem, let me put that up on the on the screen. I'm not quite sure how well you can see that, but um, 
I'll leave it there a second and you could take a picture of it. Again, my solutions are handwritten there as well. So let's read the problem. Problem number one. It says that Fryer Company purchased some equipment three years ago. The company's required rate of return is 12%, and the net present value of the project is a negative $700. Annual cost savings were $10,000 for year one, $8,000 for year two, and $6,000 for year three. Problem is asking you, what was the amount of the initial investment? So the first thing that occurs here is there is an annuity here. There is an annual cash flow, but unfortunately it is not annual and equal. So you cannot use, you cannot use the annuity table that's presented in the problem. We need to discount all of them as if they were a PV of one. And again, I said the company's rate of return is 12%. So that's the discount rate. So this is essentially what this is asking you. Again, we're looking at problem number one. And they said the net present value was a negative $700. So they gave you the solution. So they have some sort of investment over here. We don't know what that number is. They do not tell us. But we also know that there are three cash flows. There is a year number one, number two, and number three cash flow that occur here. So the first one, the first cash flow that you have is $10,000 in year one. And that's where the interest rate is 12% and N equals one. So we're going to multiply it times 0 0.893. That's going to be $8,930. That would be an inflow of cash, right? Positive number. Year number two, there is a cash flow of $8,000. In the PV table, we want to use PV of 1, 0.797. This is 63.76. And then lastly, there is a cash flow in year three of $6,000. And where the number of periods is three, that discount rate of 12% gives me a factor of 0.712. This is 42.72. So some number up in here will result in a cash flow, a negative NPV of $700. So essentially, you want to add all those numbers together, and you're going to come up with a project cost of 20000 278 and please remember that this is an outflow let me erase that show what it really is supposed to look like this is going to be a negative 20,278 to make all that math work an outflow initial investment of 20,278 the positive inflows of 8930 6376 and 4272 results in a negative $700 so the answer to the question the amount of the initial investment is 20,278. Not a very good eraser. Let's look at the um, second problem here. Number two, it says Dominican company has a minimum required rate of return of 9%. That means the required rate of return is 9%. It is considering investing in a project which costs $300,000 and is expected to generate cash inflows of $140,000 at the end of each of the three years. The net present value of this project is solve the problem. So again, this is number two. And we want to have, have outflows. And the first outflow we have is the investment in the project. They said is $300,000. There's no need to take the present value of it because it occurs now. Because it occurs now, it's already stated in present value dollars. But we have an inflow on this project. And it says specifically that it has 
is expected to generate cash inflows of $140,000 at the end of each of three years. Because this is an annual and equal cash flow, we can use the PV of an annuity where N equals three and I equals 9%, which is the company's required rate of return. So we're gonna use a factor of 2.531, 2.531, which results in 354,340 dollars. The outflow of 300,000, the inflow of 354, 530 gives me an NPV of 54,300.